Welcome back to News 360. It's now time for Mission. It is supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, the UK Aid and the European Union. Now let's do some stories regarding education and inadequate classrooms and accommodation is impacting negatively on academic work at the St. John's Integrated School in Navrongo in the Upper East Region. The school which admits both hearing and hearing impaired students needs urgent support to accommodate both teachers and students. Bright Nana Amfo reports authorities are struggling to provide the needed infrastructure for the school. Left, then, This is the school's cadet. A regular drill at night. You go to the classroom side. You have three minutes to come back. Let's go. One, two, three, Saint four. St. John's Integrated come. School in Navrongo is not wall. You have three minutes to come back. Intruders are therefore many. The school's cadet has a duty to protect students. As a special school, you can see that our school is situated in a valley and between two streams. And you know the nature of the world now. Intruders come in, even villagers ride in and out on necessary visitors at night. So we need a fence wall. Our this dining hall is one of the I'm challenges sure. of St. John's Integrated School. Accommodation is inadequate. Classrooms have been turned into dormitories. As a housemaster, it has not been easy at all. I think you can even see for yourself that the place is congested. Even as we speak, during these heat hours, I always say, you know, this time around, this place is always hot. Students have to force to sleep outside. And they are being, you know, attacked sometimes by reptiles. So it's actually a problem for us here. The hot weather conditions of the north is a further burden on the students. It is time for preps and this is where you can find these uh, kids uh, studying. Um, the rooms are very hot this time of the year between May, June and perhaps somewhere July. The rains have failed and so very hot weather. They, they, they are compelled to sit outside they can't sit in the classroom, so perhaps it's held under the trees here. Several of them gathered here, uh, reading and perhaps getting ready for uh, tomorrow, the next day's work. This is a situation here. The classrooms are uh, not too good, and so they are compelled to stay here. If you can see uh, far behind me, a lot of them also sitting there, simply just to uh, read. Very soon they have to go to bed. But even where they go to bed, there are issues with where they're sleeping. This is not all. Rooms are congested and hot, and so they sleep in the open at night. Though at periods when the weather is cool, they go back to their rooms. This is one of the many infrastructure challenges confronting the school. The kids are moving. Francis. Yes. Yes. Teachers do not stay on campus during the day and at night. Supervision is therefore poor. A teacher's bank started so many years ago still so sits there. Several other infrastructure are uncompleted. This is worrying and affects academic work. The infrastructure situation is not the best, but the little that we have, we are managing with that. I say this because uh, if you go around the dormitories, you can see that there is congestion and uh, we are trying to manage it. The school has over 700 population. Inclusive education is employed here. Both the hearing and hearing impaired get a position here. But the many challenges bedeviling the school is drawing back efforts at achieving success. The school can, however, boast of many achievements. Uh, volunteering uh, past students who picked up the language from uh, because we normally will teach a sign language class one period a week for all the students by the end of the three years they are able to sign so now we have more students I can see that for the past students who have come out at least 
uh, in the society, when they meet students with hearing impairment, they can communicate with them. The authorities say enhancing support will improve efforts at ensuring social inclusion. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's stay in the uppermost regions of the country because poor road network is negating efforts at speeding up development in the Nadeoli Kaolo district of the Upper West region. Farmers are unable to go to farm due to bad roads, which get cut off during the rainy season, while school children and pregnant women have difficulty in moving due to culverts that are totally washed off. Here's a report by Bright Nana Amfo. This is the only tarred road in the district. It links Nadoli to Jirapa and beyond. The rest are miles and miles of dusty and tarred and poor roads. Corvettes, bridges and dams get flooded during heavy rains. When the rain sets in, they are very, very in trouble and it is causing a big challenge. On the western side of the district, it's closer to the Black Volta and it's, uh, it's low, thereby causing us a lot of headaches when the rain starts. Commuting is therefore a challenge. The district is vast and wide. This is the Assembly's headache. Economic activities are most affected. A greater part of communities in the district lies behind this river. Several residents are forced to cross this river before they can undertake the economic activities. Now in the month of June and July, they simply can't do it because the river gets filled up. It is just below my knee now, but very soon, it will get to a level where residents cannot cross. School children can't go to school during the rains. A health worker even ever died there some years back, around the early 90s. And here, somebody was washed. Fortunately, he got himself entangled with uh, some trees that fell inside there. And they had to quickly mobilize to come and remove the person. This culvert links the district to Burkina Faso. It has caved in several times. School children who would have to cross to school are most affected. They simply cannot go. Roads around Takpu, Sankana, Kopieni and several communities are cut off during heavy rains due to culverts that cave in. The assembly is unable to construct these culverts. The appeal is for central government to step in. The assembly, however, confirmed some roads have been awarded on contract. As at last year, um, October, it was advertised and the bids have been opened and I'm reliably informed that it has been awarded on contract. I'm here to get the details as to who the contractor is and then so I can appeal to him to come to site very soon. Looking at the culverts here, if we get another heavy rain, it is going to um, cut this whole community off from assessing healthcare and other uh, facilities across the other side of the district. Our hope is to see contractors soon come on site so as to open up the area for development. Bright Nananfo, TV3. And from the news hub here at Adesanwe, I am Solis Rose Corte. That is all for Mission for tonight. It is supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, the UK Aid and the European Union. Isa Moni is standing by with more news.